Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to discuss a somewhat unusual but also somewhat exciting explanation for the bizarre detection of the most powerful neutrino ever seen that we've just discussed a few weeks back. And in this case it's actually an explanation that though it does make sense, if correct, could potentially explain the existence of dark matter and could also prove Stephen Hawking correct after all. Because here the explanation involves black holes, but not just any kind of black holes primordial black holes exploding with tremendous power. And so let's talk about this in a little bit more detail, but I guess first let me remind you what happened with that somewhat bizarre detection of a neutrino. Now first of all, as we've discussed before, neutrinos are pretty much everywhere. Even right now as you're watching this video, trillions of neutrinos, individual neutrinos, pass through your body without you noticing every single second. And that's because neutrinos potentially represent some of the most numerous particles in the universe and seem to be present everywhere. But the thing is, there are still a lot of things we don't know about them, including for example their mass. As a matter of fact, if they even have mass. But a lot of different events produce them, with some events producing more than others. For example supernova, like SN1987A, was essentially one of the first times we've discovered neutrinos coming from somewhere that's not the sun. And that's because the sun also produces a lot of neutrinos at all times. But basically any energetic event involving any kind of a radioactive decay or high energy particle interaction will usually produce neutrinos that will then travel the universe for billions and billions of years. And that's because generally speaking, neutrinos don't actually like interacting with anything. Basically, one of the main reasons they can pass through your body or through everything without us feeling it is because a typical neutrino can only interact with matter through gravity or through what's known as the weak force. Not through electromagnetic force and not through strong force like a lot of other particles. And so as a result, they're sometimes referred to as the ghost particles. And that's because they're elementary particles that barely interact with any matter. But they do create interactions occasionally. And if we can build a big enough neutrino detector, such as this one right here known as the ice cube, at some point we're going to detect at least one of these interactions as they pass through various matter. And a lot of modern neutrino detectors work in a very similar way. They essentially contain extremely sensitive photodetectors that detect certain photons. And so sometimes, as certain neutrinos pass through ice or pass through water, because they're moving much much faster than the speed of light inside water, they'll produce what's known as Cherenkov radiation. Or essentially they leave behind a kind of an aftershock that can then be seen as light. And so by detecting this somewhat faint blue glow, it then becomes possible to not just catch neutrinos, but even find out where they came from. Mostly because by having a lot of these detectors in a relatively large volume, it then becomes possible to trace the path of the neutrino as it passes through all of this water. And this has been done many many times. But this time one of the newer detectors, the one in Europe, KM3NET, was able to detect something we've never seen before shortly after it started its operation. Here, unlike the ice cube neutrino, these detectors are actually just inside water. And they're very deep inside, so there is very little interaction with other types of radiation. And in February of 2025, after months and months of investigation, researchers confirmed that there was a very bizarre detection. It was actually discovered 3.5 kilometers deep in the ocean, and it was a result of a single muon with extremely high energy that produced so much light that it basically lit up one third of all of the sensors. And intriguingly, it also seems to have passed through a large chunk of crust because it was actually traveling almost horizontally as opposed to coming from somewhere above the detector. And once this particle was analyzed, it was discovered to contain at least 100 times more energy than any previous neutrino ever seen. Approximately 220 quadrillion electron volts. And researchers have never seen such a powerful neutrino coming from anywhere, and most importantly, it was even unknown what could have created such a powerful event. The study in the description describes this in more detail. But basically by tracing this event, and by trying to figure out what could have created this, they realized that it must have come from some kind of a cosmic neutrino. And here cosmic neutrinos are always believed to be generated by various cosmic rays, very often the result of some kind of an extragalactic source, such as what we refer to as cosmic accelerator. So basically some kind of a super powerful source, such as a supermassive black hole. For example, cosmic neutrinos are very often seen coming from a lot of X-ray binaries. But the thing is, even for most cosmic neutrinos, their source is usually unknown. And in this case, because this was such a powerful event, 
That source is even, I guess, more unknown. As in, scientists don't even know how to approach this or how to start explaining this. Because whatever created this is way more powerful than even the most powerful black hole we've seen so far. But in this new study, scientists do actually propose something that was technically hypothesized by the famous Stephen Hawking back in the 70s, and something researchers have been actually searching for for all of these years. Primordial black holes. Andrea Boccia and Fabio Iocho, whose names I'm certainly mispronouncing once again, decided to see if it's possible to explain this through the lens of primordial black holes. And specifically, they actually suggest that it is possible to produce these neutrinos through the event proposed by Stephen Hawking. Back in the days, Hawking realized that, due to the nature of quantum physics and due to the nature of the event horizon around black holes, technically all black holes should eventually basically evaporate. Now, there's an older video in the description that kind of explains the process in more detail, but in essence, due to the formation of what's known as vacuum fluctuations, if these fluctuations happen right at the horizon, they'll actually result in production of particles where one of the particles falls into the black hole, but the other one escapes, which will actually cause the black hole to lose just a little bit of energy. And if this happens over and over for billions and even trillions of years, eventually black holes that no longer consume matter should basically shrink and evaporate. Or essentially, with time, and here we're talking about a very long time, a typical black hole is actually going to get smaller and will also emit certain types of radiation depending on its mass. And once it gets small enough, it will actually start evaporating faster and faster with a black hole that's small enough producing so much radiation that it eventually explodes. Back in the days, NASA actually made this primordial black hole lifetime illustration, roughly showing us how long a typical black hole would last depending on its mass. And so if a black hole has a mass of planet Earth, it's actually going to survive for at least 40 trillion actillion times the current age of the universe. But in terms of physical size, it would only be this big. But once you actually reach smaller sizes and smaller masses, so essentially here we're talking about a really large asteroid, the lifetime of the black hole starts to approach the current age of the universe. And so on the smaller end, if you have a great pyramid mass black hole, it's only going to survive for 381,000 years, but it's also going to be ridiculously tiny, 1% of a proton. And the smaller the black hole, the faster it evaporates and the more energy it starts to release. Now obviously this is all theoretical, but at some point it's believed that the black hole is going to reach a kind of a threshold where it basically just explodes completely, producing an enormous event, very likely more powerful than a typical supernova. And it just so happens that the calculations in this study seem to match the observations from this neutrino. Or specifically, if this was an explosion of a primordial black hole of a certain mass, it could indeed produce a neutrino with just the right energy. But there is a small side note. In order to produce this exact amount of energy, the black hole actually has to be really small, approximately 10 tons of mass. So here we're talking about something that's even smaller than this Great Pyramid. And possibly even smaller than this blue whale. And as you can see here, a blue whale mass black hole should only be able to exist for 0.41 seconds. Now because we believe these primordial black holes existed since the beginning of the universe, here obviously something doesn't add up. How can such a small black hole survive for so long? And this is obviously a bit of a problem. But scientists here do propose one potential explanation. It is quite possible that these primordial black holes that have reached a certain size also basically kind of get stuck. And this is kind of connected to one of the proposed concepts from back in the days, referred to as the memory burden. So essentially here, in that Stephen Hawking proposition, in a perfect world, we would see these black holes evaporating with a kind of a constant emission. But due to quantum interactions on the surface of a black hole, if these emissions become very powerful, there is actually a kind of a back reaction effect, where the information inside the black hole starts to resist decaying. And so once the mass of a black hole drops below a certain threshold, this back reaction can dramatically change the evolution of a black hole and potentially have it stuck at a certain mass. Or in some sense, cause it to extend its lifetime by a huge amount. In this case, even for billions of years. In essence, suggesting that even a tiny primordial black hole can exist much longer, but it will still eventually explode, producing these enormous energies. Although technically, I guess a much more simpler explanation would be the black hole used to be much more massive and just evaporated for billions of years until it reached some kind of a threshold where it suddenly exploded. I mean, obviously here the details are currently unknown, but if this primordial black hole explanation is correct, 
we might not even need additional explanations, because in some sense this is exactly what Stephen Hawking predicted. But naturally this is just a hypothesis. And there's only one way to prove this hypothesis in the next few years. Based on these calculations, researchers also discovered that similar objects doing similar things should be also detectable with very similar properties in the next two to three years. And that's because here, based on the assumptions Stephen Hawking made back in the days, we actually expect a lot of these primordial black holes with very similar masses to be doing the same thing over and over everywhere around the universe. And that's because the assumption Stephen Hawking made was that these primordial black holes could potentially explain mysterious dark matter. In other words, dark matter could at least partially be explained by these unusual primordial black holes that existed for billions of years. And since right now this seems to be one of the better explanations we have for this bizarre energetic neutrino, at least without breaking any serious physics, this is definitely going to be one of these events we'll be discussing for many months to come as new evidence comes out and possibly as more neutrinos of similar energy are discovered elsewhere. And so for all we know, this unusual detection was literally that proof that we needed all along. Maybe this is indeed the signs of primordial black holes, which can finally explain dark matter once and for all. But because this is just the first such study, it will take months and months of different analysis to determine what's happening here. And especially because the explanation for this primordial black hole right now is not really that satisfactory. Technically, a black hole of this mass should only exist for a fraction of a second. So the fact that it was able to survive for billions of years is maybe just a little bit strange. Unless, of course, somehow this neutrino traveled for 13.8 billion years and this black hole exploded a long time ago. I mean, that's another possible explanation. But we'll definitely find out more soon, because now this detector is officially operational and it's probably going to be making more discoveries really soon. And so until future discoveries, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, Support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.